Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Woodhounds podcast. My name is Joe, and I'm sitting here with my good friend, Dan. Dan, why don't you tell the world hello? Hello again, Woodhounds, and welcome to another episode of the podcast. Yeah, this has been um, this has been a lot of fun. It's added a level of enjoyment to my week <laughs> to get a hangout here in Woodhound Studio with you. Oh, it's it's great. It's <laughs> but what's even better is seeing the response from our listeners out there. How many people are tuning in each week, and the numbers keep going up. Yeah, you know the thing that I keep forgetting about in podcasts you know like in youtube you want to get a view and in podcasts you want to get a download yes. which means that a person listened to to the podcast and you know podcasts is still a pretty new thing for me i'm still learning about them and how to navigate them and how to search and I just can't help that it's the same out there for our listeners, you know, that I think for a lot of us, this is, this is our first experience with a podcast. Yep. Yeah. And, and once, you know, once you get dialed in, I, I mean, it's, it's pretty simple, but it's just that initial finding the platform and finding the podcast itself that can be mm -hmm. sometimes a bit of a challenge. And people have done pretty good in subscribing you know, where they click on the appropriate button. So if you're on Spotify, Pandora, anywhere that you listen to podcasts, there is that option where you can select uh, subscribe. And that gets us bumped to the top of your list of recommendations of every week. The next thing, though, that Dan and I were talking about is if you notice right around that same area, on your touch screen is a, is a star. And if you click on that star, it gives you the option to rate our podcast. Yeah. And uh, some of you have rated it, but not everyone. And what we're asking is that you look for that star and give us a rating. Hopefully it's a five star, but we want you to be honest and uh, let us know what you think. That's right. Let us know. If you, and the other thing is, if you do have any feedback or any ideas for topics, you can always email us at thewoodhounds at gmail.com. Yeah, but yeah go ahead. You. Click that follow button. Click the star rating. Um, and the other thing is, I mean, if you don't want to follow us, just delete all other podcasts that you listen to and make us the only <laughs> one you listen to. There you go. <laughs> yeah. And Dan and I have a lot to learn, and we have to get better at what we're doing, too. And we are going to start um, in our future podcasts. We're going to make a, a weekly segment of, of listener mail. So we'll be, you can expect us to regularly read some of the comments that we get on the air. Yes, we always love hearing from you. We love getting the feedback. Um, we do, I mean, if we... If you send us an email and we, you know, we don't read it on air, we read everything. It's just sometimes we won't be able to get to all the emails on air. Yeah. So Dan and I both got our starts in, uh, in, in this Firewood community from YouTube. We're both YouTube channels. And it, it just seemed like a natural thing to start. Dan and I had been talking on the phone. Yeah, we we had made a comment that we should be recording our conversations because we thought they were kind of funny. And that got us to thinking about putting together a podcast. And neither one of us knew what we were getting into. Uh, we just did our research and we would listen to podcasts and listen to what we liked and what we didn't like. And then we just thought we would try to put something together. And it just seems like, I don't know, Dan, is... YouTube, do you see a lot of similarity with YouTube and with podcasts? Uh, yes and no. Um, YouTube is is unique in itself, I think. And it's 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 kind of like one of those things where um you have to really have a plan and know what you're getting into or 
you could end up being consumed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think obviously the big the the big one is you know that YouTube is video, right? And yep. and podcast is not. Although there are some podcasts that videotape themselves <laughs> sitting at a desk talking into a microphone, <laughs> right? Which, I don't know, whatever. And because uh, you know. Dan and I prefer to record our podcasts wearing tuxedos and those uh, top hats like the guy on the Monopoly board has. Yeah, it, it just doesn't give the look of a firewood podcast. <laughs> yes, I'm not a tire. So, but maybe yeah. eventually we'll get to the video part of the podcast. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. But that's one of the power of podcasting is you can paint pictures in people's heads, you know of uh you know here a uh, spoiler alert we're not wearing tuxedos and we're not wearing those funny hats but <laughs> <laughs> that's the power of podcasting and that's why i think it is you know I, I hear about some of our our listeners for instance our good friend skitter kev from canada listens to our podcast in in the cab of his processor or his uh or one of the machines that he's driving around his wood yard you know and, and what a great way to escape of just listening to uh, you know, two people talking about a similar interest, right? Yeah, and that's where it's different from YouTube, where you could you could just listen to the audio, but it probably wouldn't make a lot of sense unless you're visually seeing what's happening in the video. Yeah, and especially with firewood, because <laughs> you know that's some of the appeal of firewood on YouTube is watching the logs getting cut, you know, and yes. the, the, and the saw just. You know, the saw ripping into the wood and throwing chips and splitting it and stacking it. And, oh, that and, fun stuff. And me complaining about the weather <laughs> and, the, <laughs> and the mud, all of that, you know. So that is, I think that is, um, you know, it just seemed like starting this podcast was, I don't know, just seemed like a natural, natural progress, don't you think? Yeah. And, and maybe, I mean, if there are listeners out there who have stumbled upon the podcast and don't know of our YouTube history, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it is kind of interesting, I think, um, kind of how we both kind of started. So yeah. I think it might be a how good did, little topic to. Uh, could be. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of you that I know, and there's a lot of you that I don't know. Uh, like I knew that you uh, grew up on a farm that firewood was a part of your youth and uh it built a lasting relationship with your family uh, but what i don't know is how you decided to turn that into a youtube channel well <laughs> sitting here today i often ask myself why i did, <laughs> did that. <laughs> no it was um well i also have a little background and history with my where my the job that i have um i used to also be into like motion graphics and do a little video work so i kind of had that as a second interest and hobby as well um and then when i started making firewood to sell i just kind of i was on youtube watching mm -hmm. other channels and i just got the idea to kind of mesh my two interests of uh, video and firewood and, and start a channel to see where it went. Mm -hmm. I, I found myself just watching every video I could find of firewood being split. There's just <laughs> something so satisfying yes. of watching logs getting split. But your channel isn't always, isn't just about, though, logs getting split, is it? You, you, you to me, have that emotional connection that I think all of us are looking for. And that's what I, that's the way I view your channel, that it is not just wood getting split and stacked. And there's a lot of channels out there like that, and I love them all. Uh, but, you know, every channel has their own thing. Your right. thing to me is that emotional connection that people have to firewood because it represents something more than just labor. You know, there's that connection, you know, yep. you and your parents and your youth and, and all. And I think that it reflects in your channel. 
that's that's one of the things I did want to focus on was like just making that connection and just being engaged with the person watching to have them kind of understand there's more to firewood than just like you said logs getting split and logs getting stacked and you know all the things you think of with firewood um and then incorporating the fun part of it like for me it's fun and it's fun yeah. for me to i guess try to bring that to light on camera and i don't know it's <laughs> yeah it's it's in interesting it's one of those things where like sometimes um people will look at you having a youtube i look at it as it's similar to having, if you think of it, a pet lion. Like if you had a pet lion and you went out on a walk, people would look at you and say, wow, you have a pet lion. That's pretty cool. But each day you're not out walking, you're home trying to keep that lion from eating you. And that's my YouTube <laughs> channel. <laughs> what people don't see, you know, like they see the video, but like I don't think sometimes people understand there is a lot of work that goes into it. And yeah. it's... Yeah, it can be a monster. <laughs> Do you find is it does it cause you stress? No, no. Um, but I did when I started my channel. I did like I'm one of these people where if I set out to do something, I'm like setting goals and I'm setting standards to where like I figured out when when I wanted to post videos and I just made that a non negotiable part of my routine. So no kidding, I stick with it. Every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, a video is going to come out. I find that shocking to hear. I'll be honest with you. You don't come off to me as a person who lives that kind of regimented lifestyle. You, 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 to me, you just seem like, you know, you just do what feels <laughs> normal and you just do it. And if it's great, great. If it is not great, Oh, well, <laughs> well, that is the only part of my <laughs> life that I do have a regiment. <laughs> but no, it's, it's no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised to hear that, you know, because um, but I think that probably is a compliment because, you know, how like they always say, you know, like a like a, a world class athlete just makes it look so easy. Uh, and that's because you don't see that person sacrificing you know, hours yep. and hours in private, you know, working on their physical fitness and their skills to where they make it look easy. Right. Because your videos seem relaxed and easy to me. You know, they're just enjoyable. They're not, they're not busy, you know, or complicated. And that's the appeal, I think. Yeah. Well, I mean, and that's, it's not like that stuff doesn't come across in videos. And I don't think about it that hardcore when I'm making videos. It's just that I, Starting out, you know, I wanted to stick with something and I I just have it in my, just from like my past work experience, like it's, you know, if you set something up, you try to achieve that every time you mm -hmm. want to do it. So did, did it start and become easy for you or was it uh, tough or did you think about quitting? You know, how, how did the startup go? No, it was, it was relatively easy. I mean, some those of you that follow my channel probably know I also have a history. Um, for a while, I was in the local independent professional wrestling scene. <laughs> so I have experience in front of the camera, um, talking to crowds, you know, just being comfortable in whatever moment I'm in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I enjoy your channel. I think uh, I think you do a really good job. Well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I, I enjoy yeah. it as well it's it's mm -hmm. fun but what about for you what was uh like when did you start and what was your motivation for starting a yeah. YouTube channel uh, i i i consider myself an outlier <laughs> <laughs> i my channel is just a 100 percent accident uh it was not intended to ever exist and you know i I spent many an hour of my life uh, just sitting with my laptop at night watching YouTube videos of wood getting split. And there was this one channel, the guy, he's a big guy. His name was Tim from Minnesota. And he had a tree service and he split wood by hand. 
And I've watched every one of his videos and I just loved it. And he just seemed like a normal guy. And he always had this mandolin music on it, you know? <laughs> and that I that was where I got started, at least knowing that Firewood existed on YouTube. Yeah. And even then, I never thought, oh, what the heck? I'm going to go start me a, a YouTube channel, you know? It was... Uh, the starting of my firewood company which was going to be small and i need to do a video on this one day but uh the, i've kept the secret from people <laughs> oh uh -oh. yeah uh-huh you know i i'm serious we i'm we don't live a spartan lifestyle but i'm not a materialistic person you know we don't have you know the newest furniture in the house and the brand new car and this and that you know i mean we don't live like poppers but you know we don't we live pretty modestly i had this idea i just thought that the maserati gran turismo was the best looking car in the world and i wanted to have one <laughs> and i i came up with this idea that i could make a side hustle selling firewood and just save all my money and i'm gonna buy me a maserati gran turismo and that's that was the motivation behind starting a firewood side hustle, you know, because yeah. I mean, we're not rich, but we're not poor. And, you know, yeah, it, if, and I don't want to have to work for extra money if I don't have to, but I thought it would be fun. It would be like a nice goal. So that's what started. <laughs> <laughs> that's what started Ohio wood burner. So, uh, right when I started the, the firewood business, my dad, who was elderly, uh, was, he was in declining health and there was just this perfect storm of life circumstances. My, my job wanted me to relocate and dad was not doing well. And they, uh, off my job offered me a severance if I were to just go away. And I had, uh, two other job offers lined up and that's when dad approached me and said, uh, why don't you maybe just take a little break from work and, take care of me. Uh, you know, my wife gave me the thumbs up and, uh, you know, so I started taking care of dad. I took a short break from work. And, um, during that time, you know, COVID hit and, um, my daughter got sent home from college. <laughs> and when dad passed, I, you know, my firewood business grew too much for me to walk away from. And I really did think I could make ends meet selling firewood. And my wife gave me the thumbs up. And my daughter, you know, was filming me uh, with our new, we bought that Yappa firewood processor. And it's just a fascinating machine. And that, the videos of that machine made my, my channel just, I mean, I'm serious. My channel grew overnight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, to where, yeah, to where I didn't know what the heck was going on, and quite honestly, Dan, I we were at the crossroads where I thought this is not even what I want, and I was getting ready to pull the plug on doing our videos because at that point, you know, I had strangers showing up at my house. Um, <laughs> you know the the you know the problem that with that, I mean, everyone was really nice. You know, there yeah. was no like. You know, it wasn't like, you know, the Manson clan or someone showed up. The The point was, I never told anyone where I lived. <laughs> and people, you know, figured it out on their own. And, you know, I'm raising daughters and it's just, you know. Right. So that, that was a little bit of overwhelming for me. And I was honestly thinking of, I don't, I don't need this and I don't want this. Uh, but we talked it over and we just kept you know the videos going on see where where it could lead you know we got monetized quickly and my channel grew from 100 to 1000 to 5000 to 10000 to 15000 very quickly yes <laughs> <laughs> and, and and here we are and here we are yeah yeah uh huh i still remember the day that um daniel atkins sent me a link to your video one of your first videos and you were out on a delivery and I was just like, oh, this is a nice, interesting perspective because 
like I think you would like drop your daughter off and then drive around the block again and yeah. he'd film you coming <laughs> into the to the wherever you were delivering to and you know and it was just unique because the, I had never seen videos on the side of firewood from like your business perspective and right. that's that's to me what what you know lured me in and set the hook mm -hmm. the uh, every channel's got their own niche and and one of the things that one of the principles that I followed with starting my business was I didn't want my business to be just like every other firewood delivery service out there. I wanted to be different, wanted to be exceptional. And we took that same approach with the YouTube channel where I just didn't want it to be wood getting split. Although I have a lot of ch videos that is just that, but the underlying theme of the channel is, you know, a person who technically doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> um, you know, let's, I, I'm being serious here and, you know, leaving his full-time career to start a side hustle with this crazy idea and, and making it work. So that was, you know, the, the underlying message with it. And I think it really resonated with a lot of people. A lot of people latched onto it and it meant, and it meant something to them. The way people responded to our, our channel and my story, it made me want to be better, you know, and, and make our videos better. And that's why we put as much effort into them as we have. Yeah. So, yeah, that is, you know, if you, if, if Ohio wood burner is anything, it is, you know, we're, we're trying to be different from all the other firewood channels out there. Yes. Well, I, I thoroughly enjoy your channel, you, everything. And, I think one of the other um, draws and making that connection for you is that you are like, you're open about what you do with your business and you are, you're genuine in you know, how you present yourself and you're joking around, you're, you're yourself, you're you, you're unique. And like I said, I think that is one of the big factors with your channel that is, you know, a draw and yeah. keeps people coming back. Well, thank you. What, well, the one thing too, and it's easy for me to do, and I think you know some people would have a hard time doing this. I have no problems showing you know all my mistakes and where I've screwed up. Where I would want to go in one direction with uh, bundles, and then start losing interest in it, you know, and it's for no other reason than bundles just aren't that fun for me to make. Yeah, you know? so <laughs> I, I'm you know. And where else can you be real about that other than being self-employed? Because if you are hired at, you know, Acme Bundle Company, you can't say that I'm not, I don't find this fun, you know, right, you got to play, right. the, you got to play the game. So I experience all that, you know, because some, some things uh, I'm good at, some things I'm bad at, and some things I'm just not going to do. So I still do bundles, but I just don't go after them as hard as I should. And it's simply because I just, I just don't enjoy making them. You right. Know? Um, so I share all that. I share all the problems that we've had building the back 40. I even share like pipe dreams. You know, I have this brilliant idea of having a building and stuff and I just change my mind, you know, and I think that happens all the time in every business and I just show it. You yeah. Know? And then, you know, some people could say, wow, you don't have a plan. You know, you're just <laughs> you know, you're just, you're just flying by the seat of your pants. And I would say, yes, you're correct. Yes. <laughs> and, and if, and if you've ever seen on my channel, I change, you know, one month I'm doing one thing, going one direction. And the ne next month I say, what, well, you know what? I'm changing. I'm doing it different. Or I'm going to use yeah. this and then I don't use it. But I think that's mm -hmm. part of everyone's daily life in general, even outside of firewood. I mean, I think, you know, if you have certain plans in life, if you just stick to them too hard, that's where you get in trouble. And being flexible and being open and having all those things, I think, contributes to being making that connection again to our channels. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I'm battling mm -hmm. on you. <laughs> well, I think the underlying theme, though, is firewood. You know, yes. it is always front and center. And really, the probably the thing that I've learned about being self employed and selling firewood is if you are good at selling firewood, I think you could also start a business selling cupcakes. 
you know or if you were good at selling cupcakes you could be just as good selling um uh printer ink yep <laughs> you know <laughs> exactly there is that approach or that methodology of running a business and being profitable to where i don't know if it really matters what you sell you know you still have to learn your industry you ha still have to develop your relationships you still have to find your customers you know that's always going to be like that but you know sell what you want but for right. me it's for me it's it's still firewood i love firewood fire oh my god yes well and, and everything that's, that's the other thing with you know when you think of a firewood channel from a high level, you might have somebody on the outside looking in saying, well, what are you going to make videos on? If you're just, you know, firewood is firewood, but yeah. there's the processing, there's the gathering, there's the selling, the season. I mean, there's a lot to do with firewood. And I think it shows on these YouTube channels, like you can yeah. really create some nice content just on the idea of firewood being your topic. But I think so. But I also think too, that deep down the, the viewer on YouTube, I don't think they care. I think they just enjoy uh, seeing what you're up to, and and hanging out with you for that for that short time in your wood yard. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of repetition. I think it would be in any business. It doesn't yeah. matter. You right. know. I mean, how many videos have I done where I'm just stacking wood and just shooting the breeze? You know, just talking into the camera about whatever is on my mind. And uh, and those are some of my best viewed. Of videos and <laughs> i think it's because you know people feel like you know i gosh i just wish i could be there with you you know we could complain about the weather and yeah you know yeah some Crack of the jokes and have a good time yeah uh -huh. <laughs> and that's why i think you know even if there is repetition i don't think people really hold you too accountable to it uh but then you know you throw in these machines oh <laughs> and um you know so that has been an interesting thing uh, that happened with YouTube um, when you get big enough and certain industry manufacturers call you notice you <laughs> you get noticed let's just uh -huh. say yes yeah who ha who has noticed you uh, with your channel uh well <laughs> If you look in my inbox on my email, <laughs> I am noticed by a lot of people, but I don't want to be noticed by them. <laughs> yeah, uh, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's one thing uh, with my channel anyway. I tend to not want to get to, um, you know, like pushing products or just, you know, it's yes, it's worth something to be able to get like some free tools to demo or something, but sometimes that can lead down the path of now you have to say certain things that right. you don't want to say and you can't be yourself. Yeah. So yeah. It, it all depends on where the offers are coming from and whether they're a good fit. Yeah. I, I am like you. I wish I could, I should show everyone these emails. Did you get the email for wallpaper? Yes. <laughs> I had this company wanting me. They said, we really love your channel and we want, we would love for you to show our product on your channel. And I was like, well, what the heck is it? You know, it was wallpaper. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck, man? Yeah. I think you're, you're talking to the wrong person here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've gotten all kinds of solicitations. So I, I, I'm going to be honest, you know, at first I was, you know, it's an, you're infatuated with, with that whole thing, you know, where like, what the heck, man, this is because the way a lot of, um, uh, manufacturers or the you know, people that own these products, they approach you is they will say, I will give you this, uh, tool. If you can do a review on your channel. Yep. And, um, I, of course, you know, I've taken people up on that, but, where I drew the line was I have never once signed a contract. I never once um, agreed to what I was going to say. And if you saw some of my reviews, you know, I review stuff differently too. You know, I, don't, I don't get into the numbers and the this and the that. I just show what the tool means to me and how I can make it work. And, um, you know, for me too, whatever it is, it must be relevant to my channel. You know, I'm not going to, 
I'm not going to sell baskets or, you know, or wallpaper on my channel. It's got to be something that I can make um, uh, my process more efficient, you know, or show what kind of role it could play with a firewood business. Yep. Yep. And I think sometimes from, again, from the outside looking in, you know, I think that's one of the draws of, you know, having a YouTube channel is like people think, oh, you're going to get all these offers for free stuff and you're going to get all this, you know, it's, it's like this, the glam and the fame, but really like, that's not, at least for me, that's not what my channel is, was never a goal of mine. You know, it yeah. was never, that's what I had my sights set on. But for me, it was a evolution because at first I thought, oh, wow, this is so exciting. You know, I'd love to get something free. Yes. I mean, who doesn't? Who doesn't? Who doesn't? Right. Who doesn't, you know, who doesn't? But <laughs> now uh, I'm past that and I don't, I'm not, I really don't have any interest. Right. You know? um, I have had deals where, you know, I was given coupon codes because it is a, you know, I mean, I'll, I'll never shy away, you know, of this is an opportunity and I can make money with this and you better believe I'm going to do it, but I'm not going to sell my soul, you know, for, for something. And that's why I say I will not sign a contract. Now, if Maserati were to show up and I say, I was just going to ask, <laughs> <laughs> can you test out our new, uh, we're, we have this firewood delivery vehicle that we're trying to, I would say, yes, I will yes. sign a contract for the Maserati firewood truck. But, you know, I don't sign contracts. I already, I almost had a deal for power tools because I do need some. And I was, I would absolutely show them, you know, working, you know, taking tires off my trailers. But they wanted me to sign this agreement where I had to say certain bullet points and they, um, I had to, they had to approve my video before I would make it go live. And yeah. I said, I'm not, I said, I'm not going to do that. Because I, my reviews are honest and, you know, some of the things that I do sponsor or that are, are my sponsors like Easton made, you know, uh, my mind broke down and I filmed it breaking down on my channel, Yep. <laughs> you know, and I also made a part of, you know, the process of dealer support and getting it fixed and it came off great because what machine doesn't break down, you know? Right. Uh, yep. my yap my yappa firewood processor which i did buy uh with my own money but since then you know they've been so happy with the response and the visibility that they've been getting that they have you know sponsored me with like the live deck and that conveyor and yeah. uh, you know some upgrades on my machine but my machine blew a hose at 30 hours and i put it on you know yep and that's, that's just the way it is if they uh, if and that's what I've told people, you know, if you're willing to take that risk of me saying that this, you know, that this tool is a turkey, I, I'm not your guy, you know, because <laughs> if the tool's no good. I'm going to say it. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm going to be polite still, but I'm going to I'm going to be honest. Well, exactly. Yeah, there's that line you can cross where you become a jerk about things, and yeah, but yeah. we all know Talk we've we've seen you. You you're nowhere near being a jerk, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Until they turn off the camera. That's yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> so I also notice you, I have my daughter, she films me when she's home from college, but what kind of support do you have? Or you use the tripods or you, does your wife yep. hold the camera or how do you do it? Mostly it's a one man band. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's all me with tripods and different camera mounts and that's about it. Mm -hmm. Do you find that sometimes, you know, just the way the weather is, your mood, you got to get stuff done that you just don't even film stuff that you probably should have? Yep. I, I have those two mindsets. I, well, and I have, I'm like, if I know I want to get something done, I don't think about creating content. If I want to create <laughs> content, then I look for what I can, what I need to do or what needs to get done that day. And I find a way to create the content, but yeah, it's some, it's yeah. seldom ever meshes together. <laughs> yeah. I have a big pile of rounds outside and my super splitter is set up where I'm going to split them and I'm not going to film it because I just got to get this done. The ground is too soft and it's supposed to rain again tomorrow. And I just think I'm not going to mess with filming it. 
Yep. And it would be it would be great video too. <laughs> oh yeah, and and that's that's another side of of I don't know about for you, but for me it's it's interesting how after starting the channel you start to look at things and think of them as is this a good opportunity for content or is this an opportunity to just, you know, get something done. Like you always look for ways to incorporate things into creating your content. Yeah. For me, when I started really getting into it, the one thing that really I have to focus on is the time of day because where the sun is shining and the direction of where the filming would take place, it's looking right into the sun and the video looks terrible. Yes. Yeah. You know, so uh, it's just, it's just, it's weird, you know, and like the wind is a big one for me. We sit up on this ridge and it is so windy out here. And that wind blowing is such a distraction. I think it just ruins a video. Yeah. So there are some days where I got work to do, but I just can't film it because it's a hurricane outside. Right. And that mm -hmm. it, the interesting thing is like, when I used to watch videos, I never paid attention or even gave a thought to the fact of like, oh, where was the sun when they were filming this? Or where was their lighting source? Yeah. And now, you know, that's something that I think a lot of people <laughs> overlook is I yeah, know. <laughs> I'm the same way. It's like, all right, I got to wait till four o'clock before I can start filming because then the sun's going to be behind this tree and it won't be totally in my agree. eyes. <laughs> yeah, totally agree. Like I never even noticed it was windy at my house all the time. And still we started our videos. <laughs> I was like, what the heck? It's windy right. all the time. Right. Like, uh, my daughter, she'll hold an umbrella for most of our videos because that's yeah. the, the wind, you know, just to keep the microphone out of the wind. So, so looking back to that day when you first hit record on your camera, yes. uh, do you wish you hadn't? Any regrets? Any plans for changing in the future? I, no, I, I love youtube i love my channel i i i'm totally honest though you know when this first started you know we went from like zero to a thousand real quick and that's when you know i had some people showing up at the house and that's when i was like oh god <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah i don't know if i i don't know if i want this um i i you would have never thought that putting a youtube video up you know would make you uh, a celebrity like that, you know? Um, so I seriously, that was, that was the first, and that was the only time where I thought about quitting. Um, yep. cause once we got to a thousand, that's when my daughter said we can monetize. And that's when, you know, you, you can get a check from Google once a month because of the ads. And, you know, my, there's channels out there that make life changing money. And, uh, you know, mine is not one of them, <laughs> but you know, it's not chump change, but it's no. not, it's not life changing money, but I'll take it. And for what I do, uh, I would consider it easy money. It's almost a benefit, you know, because putting the videos up is kind of fun. I like to see how they do. I like to see people's reactions to them. Uh, I like watching the videos over some of them, but, um, <laughs> You know, that, that was, yes, I would absolutely do it again. Uh, I have no intentions on stopping. And I quite honestly wish I was even better and put more effort into them. And, but that's where I don't know if that is what is appealing to people is, um, you know, we did buy a nice camera. We haven't figured it out as much as we wanted to yet. But, you know, most of our videos are filmed on, a, on an iPhone. We don't use a tripod. It's like, you know, the camera is following me around. Yep. And I have to, I have to yell over top of the machines. You know, it's like the person is in there with me. I think that is the, the feel that we have with our videos. Yep. And, but that's some, but that's sometimes a good thing. Like I said, I think that gives it that genuine personal feeling, you know, of your, yeah. Videos. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm, You're I'm in the same boat. I mean, when I realized that there was an opportunity to make a little extra, money and I could almost turn YouTube into another side hustle, like my firewood side hustle, you know, that's, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Everyone says, Oh, you can, you're doing it for the, you know, the, the legacy of just making videos and just making fun. But I mean, yeah, a big factor is the fact you can make a little money doing this and it's an opportunity and I enjoy doing it. So why wouldn't I? <laughs> mm -hmm. Do all your friends and family and neighbors know that you're on YouTube? 
Um, most of my family, but not, they didn't know right away. Um, and then my neighbors, uh, a couple of them are closet back 40 fans that I found out about. <laughs> and it's interesting how many people in the reach that all of a sudden you start realizing, like you said, people, you know, I had a neighbor, he didn't like just show up, but every night he goes on a walk and one night he's walking by and he's like, Hey, so uh, that last video you put out, whatever happened to that tree? You know, like it was just, he just brought something up about YouTube out of the blue. And I was like, oh, so you watch my videos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no one, I was not allowed to tell anyone. My daughters swore me to secrecy. They were embarrassed by all of this. Oh, yes. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I went through yeah, that as well. <laughs> kids want to be the YouTube star and now their hillbilly dad is. You know, so they were, <laughs> they were having to deal with that. So nobody knew. My sister didn't even know, uh, and none of the neighbors knew. But over time, some of my neighbors stumbled upon me, and they were, you know, like our, our good friends down the road stopped up, and they were just, they just thought it was awesome, yeah. you know, to see how well the channel's doing and that they know me, and, you know, that that was really cool. Yeah, so, so I think it would be interesting to hear. Hopefully, some people will send us some emails on this and let us know if they enjoyed kind of this kind of off top. I mean, YouTube and firewood is, it's related, but you know, I, I, I enjoy talking about like YouTube and what it yeah. really takes to run the channel. But I'd, I'd like to know, you know, what the listeners have to, yeah. have to say if they want to I, hear more or <laughs> back to firewood. <laughs> yeah. I love YouTube. I love everything about it. I watch, I'm on YouTube more than I am on the television or the radio. Yep. Same here. Yeah. Same. I, I would suspect that there hasn't been a tool or a machine sold in the last five years where the customer hasn't watched it on YouTube yet. You know? Right. It's, uh -huh. it's huge and it's got a huge reach and it's growing more and more every day. And so yeah. Dan, I just thought this was a fun discussion. I really appreciate having a chance to hang out here and talk to you about firewood and YouTube and, you know why we're all here huh yeah i enjoyed it as well and like i said I'd, it'd be interesting to hear you know the response to it and and like you know maybe we'll talk about youtube again sometime who knows yeah yeah you never know yeah so i want to thank everyone out there for listening to the podcast and you know please hit that five star rating and send us an email we'd like to hear from you guys so everyone thanks for tuning in and uh dan i think maybe this is a good time to start the music yeah let's hit it let's wrap this one up woodhounds again thanks for tuning in joe great seeing you again and uh enjoy uh enjoyed that story of your your start on youtube and like i said you're you're a hell of a guy and it comes through on your videos so just keep it up well, be yourself thanks yeah <laughs> thanks dan i feel the same way about you i think you're awesome all right everyone Let's do this different, Dan. How Ooh, about this? Yeah, okay. Every, All right. Everyone have a great day. <laughs>